In this lecture, we discuss how to calculate the inverse two-sided z-transform. I will assume that you have watched my video on inverting the one-sided z-transform. So the process for inverting the two-sided z-transform is pretty much the same as the process for inverting the one-sided z-transform, but with one major difference. The ROC is critical to the calculation. I will explain why we need to know the ROC by using an example. If we have this y of z, we can find the inverse z transform by using partial fraction expansion, just like the one-sided z transform. And then we would calculate the values of a and b using the methods that we have discussed before. From our equation, we know that y of z has two poles. We also know that the ROC will be bounded by the poles, and it cannot include any poles. With this knowledge in hand, we find that there are three possible ROCs for y. Absolute value of z is less than both poles. Absolute value of z is between the poles. and the absolute value of z is greater than both poles. We can find the inverse z transform by using a lookup table. For the first ROC, y of n will be only left-sided. For the second ROC, y of n will be two-sided. For the third ROC, y of n will be only right-sided. From this exercise, we see that we cannot invert the z-transform unless we are told the ROC.